Hello friend, it's Mark out on the back 40. And in this episode, I wanna cover how to buy a used grain drill. Now I've already gone over in another video what the difference between a grain drill, a no-till drill, and a planter are. So if you don't know that, go back to that video first. If you have decided that you think a grain drill is gonna work for you on your soil and on your property and food plots, then this is a good video for you because I'm gonna go over the things when you go out to buy these the things you should look at. And I didn't t learn this myself. I learned this from a farmer buddy of mine who was kind enough to go out with me on one of these. To start with, big picture, how does a grain drill work? So what happens is this. You dump the seeds in this box. This box is full of seeds. From the inside of the box, you can see those little holes. There are little gears. There's little gears inside those holes. And as you drive, the wheel turns all kinds of mechanisms and gears all over in this goofy thing. And it magically drops seed into each of these little tubes. And this tube, you can see, runs down underneath. So the tube comes from up there. The seed box drops in that tube. The tube puts the seed down and it drops out right underneath there. See that hole? And then magically, right here is the disc. And that disc is in the ground about an inch and it's slicing it open because it's on just a little bit of an angle. So it's slicing up open the dirt and then that seed drops out of that hole right there, right into the dirt. Now. With a grain drill like this, some do, but not many. They have what's called a press wheel. And behind this, after it opens that seed channel up, drops the seed in, this one has nothing else. And that's it, it just leaves it open. So I've had turkeys, <laughs> within half an hour after I go out and I drill this thing, there'll be turkeys out there picking the seeds out of those trenches. So I would rather have press wheels, but it's a numbers game, right? And I'm not, I'm not, cash crop in here. I'm just planting uh, food plots for turkeys and deer. Anyways, so um, some of them have a press wheel that'll come behind and push down on that trench to close it, but most don't. Most just leave it open and then you're kind of hoping the rain and the wind just kind of pushes that trench closed. And there you go. You've got great seed to soil contact. So this drill is an old McCormick. I don't know what year it is, but I can tell you something that's really funny about this that he showed to me. This right here tells you how to set how much seed comes out of it. And one of these measurements down there is a peck. P as in Paul, E-C-K, a peck. Like how long ago have you heard of anybody refer to something as a peck? I mean, we call it bushels now, but anyway, so that's how old this thing is. So um, so let's start at the top and we'll work our way down. This part up here is called the box. This is the seed box. And there are one, two, or three different boxes that will come with this. Number one is this right here. This is the seed box. And right here are all the settings that you put depending on the amount of seed and the size of seed and how much you want to plant per acre. And so what you're doing is you're just dumping seed into this box here. We'll get into more detail later. So that's the big box. A second box that you might have is a fertilizer box. So they used to plant the seed and the fertilizer together. 99% of the drills you go and look at, the fertilizer box is going to be rotted out. And this one is really no exception. Actually, it's not as bad as I've seen others. Actually, this one's not too bad at all but it's, most of them are like just shredded and have no metal left in them at all. And then a third box you might have that this one does have is a grass box, they'll call it. And the reason that there's this one, you can see it is physically smaller. See how small this is compared to that big one up there? And inside here, look at the size of the holes. They're so small and that's for small seed. So like your clovers, your brassicas, alfalfa, all those really small, light seeds. Yeah, he's even got it on here. Rape, turnips, radish, kale. So these small seeds go into this box. And then the drive mechanism will, will drop these seeds out. Okay, so 
those are your boxes. What you're looking for when you're buying one of these is that they're clean. They're in good shape. The fertilizer box, give it up. You're, you're, don't even worry about the fertilizer box. You're not going to use it because it's going to be all rotten. But what you are looking at is the condition of the seed box and the, uh, or yeah, the box here. So uh, you can see that this one's in great shape. I mean, there's still paint. It's not even rusted. And that's what you're looking for. All right. Um, now what, now this is an older vintage where you see the grass seed box on the back. What the newer ones are doing, like the next newest one, this is actually going to be moved up over here on the front of the grain drill. And that's, and then it will have tubes that are going to go down and place it behind the, the planter disc, which we'll get to in a second. So to summarize what you're looking for, I would suggest you get one with a grass seed box because it can handle, if you want to just throw clover in a plot, you'll be able to do it. Clover seeds are too small for this to handle properly and to meter it out properly. You'll dump way too many seeds out on the ground using this big box for clover. You want to have something that's got a small box. Now, if you're never gonna plant clover and you're only gonna do mixes and it's always gonna have big seed in it like peas and oats and rye and corn and soybeans, then fine, you could, you could mix clover in with something like that and just put a, a multi-mix in here, which is what I did. Um, you would get away with it then. But if you want to just plant just alfalfa sometimes, just clover, just brassicas, you need a grass box. All right, have I beat that up enough? All right, let's move on. While we're back here, what you want to check to make sure is on these adjusters here, these slide back and forth. And what this really mechanism is doing is it's attached. Oh, it's hard to show you. All right, I'm gonna go on the other side and show you. So what that is attached to is actually in this grain box. It's attached to this gear. Can you see that gear down in there? So the teeth on the left, those teeth you see on the left actually slide as you move this lever to the right to put more seed down. It moves that gear to the right on all of those. All those are attached together and it moves the gear to the right. So more of the gear is showing in that hole and therefore it grabs more seed and puts more seed down. So it's really thin right now, but it'll go all the way across that whole gap and put a ton of seed down. Um, so what you want to make sure is that when you move the levers for, for adjusting how much seed is coming out, you know, there's one on the big box, there's also one on the small box, but when you move these back and forth, you want to make sure that those gears are f moving freely back and forth. A lot of them will seize up. They'll get rusty and it'll be hard to move them in and out. Maybe you can break them loose and it won't be an issue. That's not a problem if that's true, but if they're frozen, they're really rusted and corroded and frozen, again, it matters how much of a project you want. Um, it might take you a long time to loosen that all up and work through that. So again, just make sure <laughs> that it freely moves back and forth. And what it's actually doing is now I'm on the other side, I'm on the front. And when you move that lever, it is moving this rod in and out. You can see the gear right here. That was the gear we were looking at inside the box a second ago. And this gear will move right and left when you move that lever that we showed you back on the back side there. And so this whole mechanism all the way down, that's all attached, should move back and forth freely. Another thing that you're going to be needing to consider with your grain drill is how are you going to set the discs down and up? And there are two ways to do that. Number one is manual, and that's what you're seeing here. This is a manual system, and down in here is a very complicated cam system that some brilliant guy put together. And what you do is you pull on the rope, 
I'm not going to do it now because it'll drop the discs, but you pull on the rope, which pulls the lever, and it'll set the discs down. And then when you're at the end of the row, when you pull on that rope again, it'll reset it. And over the next couple of feet, it'll raise the disc back up off the ground. It's really, really cool. It's simple. It's not complicated. You don't need hydraulic lifts or hydraulic outlets on the back of your tractor to do this. So the second way that you can raise it up and down is a hydraulic cylinder. And you'll see on a lot of drills right around in this tongue area, there will be a hydraulic cylinder with a couple of hoses dangling out here. That allows you to use the remote hydraulic control up in the cab to raise and lower the discs. And it also allows you a little bit of um, depth control because you can just set it down a little bit and make real micro adjustments with it uh, without having to get out and screw a handle like this in and out to make your depth adjustments there. So that's another thing that you're going to be looking at is what do you want to raise and lower your disc? If you have rear hydraulics and you don't mind it, you need to have a hydraulic system. If you don't have hydraulics, if you're going to pull it with something else or your tractor just doesn't have it, then you need to be looking for one that's got a manual up and down. Okay, number three, you are looking for the condition of the bottom half of the drill. So we talked about the boxes and what you want to see in the top half of the drill. We talked about how you're going to raise and lower it. Now the other, next thing you're going to look for is the condition of the, the bottom half of the drill, the, the working area. So let's go through one of the rows and I'll kind of tell you the things that uh, I was taught to look for. Number one is this part right here. This is the bottom of the seed box right here that we looked at before. This right here is called the seed cup. And a lot of times what you'll see in older drills is these will be half rotten out. So sometimes fertilizer may have gone through it. They just were stored outside in their metal and they'll be half rotten. Walk away from that unless you're looking for a project. This other part of this, this seed cup drops down into the tube right here. And so you wanna make sure that those tubes are there because that tube is what's dropping the seed down behind the disc. And the disc is what's putting the cut into the ground. All right. So make sure that's not rotten, make sure that's in good condition, make sure it has tubes and that the tubes are in good condition. If the tubes are in bad condition, you might be able to replace them if you're mechanically inclined. You can figure out a way to use hose or, or um, some kind of underground tubing. That you, and if you can figure out a way to attach it to the seed cup, man, have at it, you might get a good deal. But if you're not mechanically inclined, look for one that's already done. Now. Uh, where the uh, where the disc meets the road, right? The rubber meets the road is down here on the discs. And what I want to show you on the discs is the first thing my buddy showed me to do was to grab these discs and wiggle them back and forth. Now this is pretty good. You can see it does wiggle a little bit. And what is the issue you're looking for is in the middle of all these is a couple of bearings because those bearings have pressure on them because these discs are cantilevered a little bit to cut that slice. So there's pressure on these discs when it's in the ground. And over time, they'll get really loose. And the one I went and looked at with my buddy last weekend was really, really loose. I mean, you would wiggle this thing back an inch. And he said, you know what, Mark, unless you're looking to replace, uh, there was 13 discs times two bearings, 26 bearings, don't buy this drill. So I passed. <laughs> now his is in really good shape. I really like his. His is tight like this. This one's barely moving at all. So that's what you want to do is look at how tight are all the bearings. And if there's more than, I think he said maybe more than a quarter to half inch of play in them, you're starting to get some bad bearings. And unless you're only planting maybe, you know, very small amount, an acre a year or something, you might get away with it, but you won't be very happy with it. All right. And so that's the other thing like that. That is each vertical. What you want to look at is the cup, the tube and the disc. And then you've got the springs. And so what happens here is there's a spring that is putting tension down on each one of these individual discs. Make sure there is a spring there. Make sure it's not frozen. You wanna be able to, cause I can grab this and pull it up and push it down to put different amount of tension on there to put different amount of pressure down into the dirt, okay? So you wanna make sure that the springs are in decent condition and that you can move them and adjust them. If they're frozen, Again, it's up to you. At least you know they're frozen. 
Do you think there's a way that you can undo them? And then just look over the mechanisms and make sure everything's good. There's nothing missing. There's no parts missing on all these pieces. Look for the chains. Now, now you look for lubrication was one of the things he said. And you can see how this chain on this one is very lubricated. Compared to all the other parts, that kind of shows up how much that's been lubricated. That is a good thing. I'll say the same thing about lubricating the cam over there that lifts and lowers the mechanism. That is very well lubricated also on this one. And then the last thing I would say are the tires. So you want to look at the tires. You're probably going to buy this thing somewhere away from your house and have to pull it home. So two things that I suggest on that. And again, this isn't me. This is my farmer, buddy. Make sure the tires are in decent enough condition that you think you're going to be able to pull it on pavement 30 miles an hour all the way home, which might take you 10 minutes if it's close. It might take you 10 hours if it's a long ways away. But the second thing to make sure you do is bring a grease gun with you when you buy this drill. And what you're going to make sure you do is really grease up the hubs for these um, wheels before you take it on the road. Otherwise, you're going to tear it to pieces. That is pretty much what I know about a grain drill at this point in time. Um, so as I continue to shop for one, I don't own one yet. This is still my buddies. I am in the market shopping right now. I've gone to look at a few of them. I've learned more. Every time I went and looked, I learned more about them. Uh, the most important thing that I need to do, I'm a type A. I have to say no to ones that are going to be a project to fix because um, I just want to get it done, get one, check it off my list, and move on to the next thing on my list. But I'm not doing that. I'm forcing my friend to help me through this to make sure I make a good decision. And uh, I want to help you make a good decision too. So if you like what you're hearing in this video or any of the other videos I've done, just click the subscribe button. And then the other thing is click the bell too, because what the bell is going to do is as I keep going through this process, I'm going to post more videos on things I'm learning. And I hope that I'm teaching you and you're learning too. I'm shortening your learning curve time. Um, but if you click that bell, you'll get an email that says, hey, Goofball Mark just put up another video about a grain drill or no-till or a little hunting video or something fun to watch. Um, so if you click that bell, you'll get notified. So um, any questions, throw them in the comments below. I'm going to check those every morning before I head to work and I'll try to answer any questions I can. If I don't know the answer, maybe I'll do an experiment with that and I'll, and I'll get uh, put results out here too, or we'll learn something from other people too. Thank you very much.